students uh, good morning uh, good morning to one and all so this is your uh, ninth class of uh, your first module that is uh, introduction to kinematics of machines let me begin with uh, today's class and uh, today's topic is uh, degrees of freedom okay just take the heading as uh, degrees of freedom and you can call this uh, degrees of freedom as uh, mobility of mechanism also mobility of mechanism please take this heading and i'll let in some other students also uh i think this uh, screen is visible this uh, degrees of freedom yes sir yes, okay uh, we are going to solve some problems on uh, degrees of freedom in this uh, today's class so uh, please take this heading that is a uh, degrees of freedom or mobility of mechanism so let me explain uh, what is exactly this degrees of freedom uh, with the help of some animations so uh, uh, first let me show this uh, ceiling fan okay so how many independent motion this uh, ceiling fan have can can anybody so what are the type of motions uh, a ceiling fan can have anyone rotary motion okay it can it can only have a rotary motion okay about z axis if you are to consider this axis as a z axis it can only rotate it cannot move up and down it cannot move left and right so i can say that a degrees of freedom of this uh, ceiling fan is uh, one it means the number of independent motion that a body can have so that is nothing but this degrees of freedom okay and one more example you can see, you can take this one rocket okay so how many motions that a rocket can have it means number of restricted motions you can see anyone one okay one more answer any, any any more answer can you see it is moving in upward direction means it is having one linear motion and it is rotating about a z axis okay it means i can say that it is uh, restricted to move in uh, two different directions so one is along a uh, vertical direction in upward move upward uh, way and one more is it can rotate about the z axis so i can say that number of degrees degrees of freedom that a rocket can have is 2 uh, okay even though it can move towards left and right but this rocket is restricted to move in only upward direction and it can rotate freely about its z axis or it, its own axis okay so one linear motion and one more rotary motion this rocket can have so i can call the mobility of a mechanism or mobility of this rocket or degrees of freedom of this rocket as two and what about this uh, car so what is the degrees of freedom of a car just wait for a second yeah can anyone what is the degrees of freedom of a car or auto any automobile anyone so i can give a hint that it is restricted to rotate or move in a only uh, on a single plane you can say on the earth okay it cannot move on the space okay so whether this animation is visible this car animation anyone yes sir okay then uh, Uh, I can guess no. What is the independent motion that a car can have? So you can see a car can move front and back. Correct. You can see it can have one linear motion along one axis. Okay, and it can rotate about the z axis. Okay, if you are going to consider three axes, that is x, y, z. Okay, it can move either in x or either in y, not at a time. Okay. and it can rotate about the z axis okay so i can say that the degrees of freedom of a vehicle which is restricted to move on only earth okay not on the space 
okay so is two one linear motion it may be a front and back and one more is rotary motion about the z axis okay suddenly it can it cannot move either towards left and right suddenly okay just to take a turn then it can move okay so the, uh, finally i'll consider this uh, aeroplane anyone anyone can just guess the number of uh, degrees of freedom that an aeroplane can have anyone just guess any guesses so better i can explain the degrees of freedom of a this uh, aeroplane as a 6 so i'll explain how it is okay you can consider this as a aeroplane okay and uh, this is the x axis this is y axis and this is z axis okay so the aeroplane is free to move you know x direction okay the front direction you can say and it can move along y axis also okay by varying uh, a drag and lift of this aeroplane it can have a linear motion along this y axis also and one more is it can move up and down also it can move in up and down direction also you can see in the during a take off okay so it is moving in upward direction so suddenly it can move in a vertical direction that is you can see along the z axis it means the aeroplane has three linear motions along x along y and along z okay and one more is uh, so with the help of different actuators okay which are fixed at the back side and at the this uh, side wings so it can roll it can roll about the x axis also okay it can roll by 5 degree 10 degree with the help of the actuators about this x axis okay it means one rotary path one more is it can it can rotate about z also it can rotate about z also by varying the the drag and lift of this vertical stabilizer you can see this one so it can rotate also about the z axis so you can see the direction and one more is uh, uh, during the take off and uh, and uh, landing time so the nose may be up or nose may be down it means it can it can roll about the y axis also you can say a pitching action of this aeroplane aeroplane about y axis okay it can move up and down okay so the finally the degrees of freedom of an aeroplane is 6 three linear that is along x y z and three rotary one is about x axis one more about y axis one more about z axis okay so you can take any body which is on the space okay so it will be having a 6 degrees of freedom maximum three linear along x y z and three rotary motions about x about y about z okay so how can you define a degrees of freedom of any mechanism or any body it means it is a number of independent motions that body can have that is nothing but degrees of freedom and uh, let me show one more example yeah let's consider a kinematic link whether this pdf is visible this pdf is visible or not please let me know yes sir is visible okay so just consider this as a rectangular bar ab okay which is having some length okay and i want to find out the degrees of freedom of this uh, kinematic link okay so for example so if it is present in the first quadrant okay this is x axis y axis and this is present in the first quadrant okay i want to locate the exact position of this kinematic link when you consider this point a i can locate the coordinate that is x coordinate from this reference o and a y coordinate from again the same reference okay so i can locate the exact position of this kinematic link at point a by specifying x coordinate and y coordinate and one more is just wait for a second someone wants to so i was explaining uh, at least two two coordinates are required to uh, specify the location of this point a. and one more is uh, this link either can be in a 0 degree or 90 degree 180 or between 0 and 90 okay it means one more 
coordinate is required that is angular displacement of this kinematic link okay totally two linear coordinates and one rotary coordinates are required to specify the exact position of this kinematic link so i can say uh, degrees of freedom of this kinematic link which is present on a plane of paper okay not in the space is 3 for example if i want to locate your uh, uh, location of your exact uh, your your home okay Exa i want to know the exact location of your uh, home from uh, jain college of engineering for example if if you if you are going to consider this reference as a jain college of engineering okay and this is your home i want to locate the exact position of your home from this uh, jain college of engineering okay for that i need the distance along the x axis and a distance along the y axis okay and one more is i want one more information that whether your house is facing uh, towards a uh, east direction or west direction north or south okay it means i need at least three coordinates so that i can locate the exact position of your home okay either it is facing towards east west north and north or south okay that is one coordinate and one, two more are this horizontal distance and vertical distance from this jce okay so one more way of defining uh, the degrees of freedom is number of independent variables which are required to define the exact condition exact situation or exact position of this body this kinematic link okay let's take the definition the degrees of freedom is defined as the number of independent variables that must be specified to define the complete condition of the system if you want to imagine what is the exact condition of this kinematic link at least you need to specify these three coordinates one is x one is y one more is the angular position that is theta okay so the degrees of freedom of this kinematic link is 3 and i have explained this also a body can have maximum 6 degrees of freedom three linear along x axis along y axis along z axis and three rotary about x axis about y axis and about z axis okay so we can mention those as the three translational motions along x y z and the three rotary motions about x y z beyond you can mention the angle also So this is about the degrees of freedom. I hope this is clear. Any doubts? Please let me know. If it is clear, you can say yes. Otherwise, no. Anyone? Yes, please? sir. Okay. In that case, uh, directly I'll go to the problems. So before that. uh for any mechanism it may be a four bar it may be a single slider a double slider i want to find the degrees of freedom okay theoretically not practically so by, for that there is one formula that is a cut batch criterion you can say so which is used to find the degrees of freedom of any mechanism okay so please note down this formula okay this is the equation is cut batch criterion please please write down this equation n is equal to 3 l minus 1 minus 2 j minus h whether this equation is visible yeah n is equal to 3 l minus 1 minus 2 j minus h Just wait for a second now. So this equation is uh, used to find the degrees of freedom of any mechanism. Okay, and can say the small letter n as the degrees of freedom of the mechanism. L is uh, number of kinematic links which are present in that mechanism. Okay, L is number of links or kinematic links. J is number of uh, binary joints, or you can say number of lower pairs. Lower pair means between two kinematic links the type of contact should be surface contact remember okay. 
either it may be a lower piece or number of joints number of binary joints just underline this word number of binary joints okay if at any particular joint if there are only two links are joining so such joint is called as binary and this h is number of higher pairs higher pair means between two kinematic links the type of contact will be either point contact or line contact remember lower pair means surface contact higher pair means point or line contact in short code you can remember as hp hpl h for uh, higher pair p means point contact l means line contact line contact hpl for this higher pair whether you have noted down this uh, equation shall i go to the next page anyone from 4th uh, a division have you noted down this equation yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay what about uh, nitin shall i move to the next page Let's take the next one. One more uh, criteria that is the uh, Grubler's criteria. Just take the heading Grubler's criteria. It's also very simple. If I am going to modify this equation, it will become a Grubler's criteria. The modification is I'll put n is equal to one. The above equation that is equation one. Just substitute the number of degrees of freedom as one and higher pairs as zero. Just take this condition. Degrees of freedom is equal to one. The number of higher pairs as zero. So after uh, simplification, you will get this equation. This uh, equation number two is known as the Grubler's Grubler's criterion. It is used for only the mechanism which is having a single degrees of freedom, and the type of contact between all the links is uh, only lower pairs. There is no higher pair. That's why H is zero. Okay. Just substitute n is equal to one. And h is equal to zero. After uh, simplification, uh, you'll get this equation. That is, three l minus two j. Okay, minus four is equal to zero. Yeah. So this equation. so in that case uh, you can take uh, this note also if you are getting the degrees of freedom as zero n is equal to zero so such type of mechanism is known as a locked chain it means there will not be any motion there will not be any input motion and there is no output motion so when degrees of freedom n is equal to zero so such type of mechanism is known as locked chain and if you are getting the answer as one n is equal to one or degrees of freedom as one and such type of mechanism is known as constrained motion constrained mechanism constrained means it is restricted to only one direction okay, it is free to it is free to rotate or it is free to move in only one direction example is uh, your ceiling fan which is restricted to rotate in only one direction okay about z axis means degrees of freedom is one means the type of mechanism is constrained if the degrees of freedom is 2 n is equal to 2 okay n is equal to 2 such type of motion is known as the incompletely constrained motion It means two at least two variables are required to specify the condition of that mechanism okay n is equal to 0 n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 this is a locked chain this is a constrained chain and this is a incompletely constrained so then in, uh, in the tomorrow's class i'll explain what is the uh, Exactly incomplete, incompletely constrained motion. Okay, just don't worry about that. You just take this note. N is equal to zero. N is equal to one. And n is equal to two. And one more is uh, if n becomes minus one, if the degrees of freedom becomes minus one. Okay, 
such type of mechanism is known as indeterminate structure it means by using this grubler's or uh, this cut batch equation it is not it is not possible to find the degrees of freedom of that mechanism such structure is known as indeterminate structure when n becomes minus 1 okay so four types of values you may get more than this also you will get but minimum n is equal to 0 n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 and n may be minus 1 okay if that if that is clear i'll start with this uh, first numerical or uh, first problem on this uh, degrees of freedom okay just take the heading determine the mobility or degrees of freedom of the mechanism given below i hope this first numerical is visible this is draw a rough diagram of this one okay so you can say this is a, a kinematic uh, group of so many kinematic links i want to find the degrees of freedom just try to get the degrees of freedom using that equation first write this equation that is n is equal to 3l minus 1 minus 2g minus h just take this equation so in this uh, figure you can see there are uh, three links first link is this one this is the first kinematic link or element so i'll name i'll give the namings that is one and this ac is a third link and this bc is a second link first second and three it means l is equal to l is equal to 3 and what about j number of joints i want number of joints also between the first kinematic link and the second kinematic link there is one joint and i can call this joint as a binary joint because at this joint only there are two kinematic links they are joining at the same point okay at this joint b there are two kinematic links are converging so such a, jo a joint is known as binary if there are three kinematic links are joining at the same point so i can call such joint as a ternary if there are four kinematic links are joining at the same point so i can call such joint as quaternary but in this case you can see between the first kinematic link that is one and two there is one binary joint so again between two and three there is one more binary joint again between three and one there is one more so j is equal to three number of binary joints and this is only a symbol okay in actual case all the kinematic links will be in the form of a rectangular bar a circular bar anything okay the shape may not be uh, like a straight line it may be of any shape okay for your convenience uh, i'm i'm sh i'm showing this symbol that is a line diagram so if you are to consider the type of kinematic link is a rectangular here also rectangular and the type of pair means the type of contact is a surface contact okay if this also a rectangular bar and the, if we, this also a rectangular bar the type of contact just remember the word the type of contact is surface contact it means there is no line or point contact it means if there is no line or point contact i can say the number of higher pairs h is equal to 0 h is equal to 0 there is no point or line contact between each kinematic link okay the type of contact between all the links is surface contact it means it it can have three lower pairs there is no point contact so h is zero so whether you are getting n is equal to zero after substituting uh, this value of l j and h after simplification whether you are getting this value anyone your feedback is important otherwise uh, i'll not get any reply from your side at least say whether so, about the h h is nothing but this is a higher pair just uh, if you want just wait for a second because in the previous class 
I explain what is exactly the higher page. Just wait for a second. So explain it, huh? Okay, just wait. So you can see this higher pair, no? Higher pair means between two kinematic links, the type of contact will be either line or point. Okay, you can see between this uh, ball bearing and this uh, inner racing, the type of contact is uh, point contact. There is also point contact, but here between the roller bearing and this inner ring, so the type of contact is line. Here also you can see the type of contact is point. Again, between the wheels of the bicycle with respect to the earth, the type of contact is point. Between gears also the type of contact is uh, point. So these type of contacts are known as higher pitch. And if the type of contact between two kinematic links is type of in the form of a surface contact, okay, the one surface, uh, the surface of one kinematic link and surface of another kinematic link, they are making one pair. The such type of contact is known as lower pair. You can see all these are examples of lower pair. Just remember the word surface contact. You can see the type of contact between two kinematic links is surface. Then I can call such pair as lower. And if the type of contact between two kinematic links, either it will be a point or line, I can say such kind of pair as higher pair. Okay. So actually, it is not a, a single straight line, but in, in actual case, it will be in the form of a rectangular bar. Okay. It means one rectangular bar and one more rectangular bar. And the type of contact is surface, not the point. There is no ball bearing, there is no roller bearing, there is no gear. Okay, so the type of contact between this kinematic link and this is surface contact. So there is no line or point contact. So H is zero. H means number of higher pairs. Okay, so after substituting this uh, these values, I got the degrees of freedom as zero. It means, as I said, this is a locked chain. You can try in your home also. Yes, Sir, what is the L? L is number of kinematic links. So this is one kinematic link. This is one more. This is one more. AB, BC, and AC. You can consider there are three. Pardon me. J is J, 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 J is a joint. Okay. So the type of joint between two kinematic links. You can see kinematic link one and two. They are joined by pin joint. Uh, you can consider as a nut and bolt joint, okay, so that there will be a relative motion in other cases. Between one first kinematic link, you can see this one, and between second kinematic link, the, uh, what is the type of joint? Okay, so this is a binary joint. This is also one more, this is also one more. Between first and second, there is one, one joint. Between second and third, there is one more. Between third and one, there is one more. J means number of binary joints. Okay. Let's take down this. Uh, after solving uh, some more problems, you'll get uh, exactly what is LJH. Okay. Rating the degrees of freedom as uh, zero. Rating the degrees of freedom as zero. It means, as I explained, this triangular form of a kinematic chain, it will form a locked chain. In your home, you can try this. This consider three wooden sticks. And join all the three sticks okay try to move that you just try to give the input motion at this link 2 the link 3 will not move okay because it forms a structure as explained in the previous classes okay this triangular kinematic chain it forms a structure there is not be any relative motion between any link it means the degrees of freedom is zero there is no motion at all Just take the second one. So after solving the two to three problems, you'll get the exact idea what is uh, L, J, H. Just consider this uh, second mechanism, that is a four bar mechanism. Just draw this.
So this uh, second problem is nothing but a four bar mechanism and it is having uh, four kinematic links. Link AB is one kinematic link. BC is a second one. CD is a third one. And DA is a fourth kinematic links. L means number of kinematic links are four. And what about J? Number of binary joints. Okay. The first kinematic link and the second one, they are joining at certain point. That is point B. And the type of joint is binary because only there are two kinematic links are joining at this place. Between one and two, there is one joint. Between two and three, there is one more joint. Okay. Between three and four, there is one more. Between four and one, there is one more. Total number of joints are four. And the type of contact between each link, it will be a surface contact. Okay. So it means there is no point or line contact between each kinematic links. So the type of pair is higher pair. Sorry, there is no higher pair. It means H is zero. So I'll solve some problems where there is a high, uh, there is a point or line contact. The mechanism which is having a higher pairs. So then only can uh, compare what is exactly lower and higher pair. Okay. For the time being, we just take S as zero. There is no point or line contact between each kinematic link. This line, this is a line diagram. This is not an exact diagram. Okay. The physically, this link one, it may be in the form of a rectangle of any shape, it may be a triangle, any shape. Okay. The type of contact between each link is a surface contact, not the point. Hence, H is zero. There is no point contact. H is zero. Whether you are getting a uh, degrees of freedom as one, anyone? Anyone, please let me know. We are getting uh, degrees of freedom as one or not? It means if you are giving input at yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if you are giving uh, input at uh, second link, okay, it can move only from left to right and right to left, okay. Uh, if you want the animation, I can show the animation. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can see this uh, four bar chain. Okay. So it is moving in only one direction. It means, uh, yes, sir. If you are going to specify the angle theta at the input, for one example, sir, yes, sir. if you are going to mention the angle theta. For example, zero degree or ninety degree, you can. It will be. Sir, one more, sir. Yeah, you'll be able to locate the exact position of this kinematic link. For example, now you can see the angle is uh, approximately hundred degree. Okay, if you are going to mention one angle, so I can say I can imagine what is the exact position of this. Okay, if it is ninety degree, I can imagine what is the position. If it is one eighty. Okay, as I said, it is the number of uh, the variables that are required to specify the. Exact position of this kinetic chain. Okay. And uh, okay. Then uh, I'll go to the next one. Just take this one. Sir, your idea is not clear. One second. Please pardon me. I, I'm not getting your words. Just wait for a second, there is a network problem.
Okay. Uh, please let me know now the screen is visible because uh, there was a problem with the internet. Yeah, whether this problem is visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. In that case, please uh, take the next yes, one. Sir. Okay. Just take the this uh, third numerical that is uh, this one. Just take a rough diagram of this one. A group of uh, five kinematic links. Group of five kinematic links. Yeah. So this uh, mechanism is having five kinematic links. That is, uh, AB is one kinematic link, BC is one more. Just write down the numbers. This number indicates kinematic links. Okay. And these alphabets indicate uh, joints. First kinematic link, BC is the second one, CD is the third one, and DE is the fourth one, and finally this EA is the fifth one. Number of kinematic links are five, and uh, between the first kinematic link, that is AB and BC, okay, at point B you can see the type of joint is a binary, because only two kinematic links are uh, meeting at this point. The type of joint at point B is uh, binary. Again, uh, between 2 and 3, there is one more. Between 3 and 4, there is one more. Between 4 and 5, one more. Between 5 and 1, there is one more. Total number of binary joints are 5. J is equal to 5. And there is no point contact between each links. So, there is no point contact means there is no higher pair. H is 0. H means number of higher pairs. Just tell me the answer. Uh, what is the degrees of freedom? Just substitute all the all the Easy. values. To two. Okay, two. Correct. It means at least you need two, uh, two coordinates. Okay. For example, at least you have to mention this angle. Okay, theta one. Okay, and you need to mention this also. So at least you need two coordinates. Then only you can locate the exact position of this one. Okay. You need to mention this angle and this, then only can locate the exact position. You can imagine what is the exact position of this mechanism. But in the previous case, if you are going to mention only one angle, this one, so you can imagine the what is the position of other links. Okay, all are interrelated. So that is the only meaning. That is n is equal to two means at least two coordinates are required to explain the status or the condition of this mechanism. That is n is equal to two. And I'll take a simple example uh, to clear uh, to get a clear idea. I'll take one more example. Uh, yeah, just take this one. Problem number six. I'll take another five minutes. Just take this figure so that I can uh, explain what is exactly this higher pair. So you can take this as a, a support or a frame. Which is fixed as a kinematic link one. To this frame, there is one more link is attached at point this point. So this is the second kinematic link, and this is the third kinematic link. So this third kinematic link is attached to a circular wheel or a disc at this point four. Okay, and the type of joint is a binary or a, um, it is a a rotary joint it means the wheel is free to rotate 
okay it is in the bracket it is mentioned that it is rolling as well as sliding means the wheel is free to rotate at this point 4 with respect to kinematic link 3 it means number of kinematic links are 4 the fixed one is 1 you can take this as a crank this as a connecting rod and this is a circular disc totally 4 kinematic links l is 4 now how to find the joints between this uh, fixed link that is 1 and 2 there is one joint between 2 and 3 there is one more between 3 and 4 between because kind of this uh, link 3 is uh, attached with this link 4 at this point okay the type of joint is binary and you can see there is no joint between this uh, fixed frame and this circular disc okay there is only a contact is there there is no joint there is no nut and bolt there is no pin and joint simply the wheel is the wheel is placed on this uh, flat form there is no joint at all just remember the word contact is different and the word joint is different so this is a joint this is also a joint this is also a joint but here it is a contact Okay, the circular wheel is in contact with this uh, link 1 but there is no joint so i can say the number of joints are 3 between 1 and 2 there is one joint between 2 and 3 one more between 3 and 4 there is one more number of joints are 3 okay and what about between first link and the fourth link so there is a contact so what is the type of contact it is a point contact because the type of wheel, type of link is a, a circular one so the type of contact between the first link and the fourth link is at this point it is a point contact point contact means remember it is a higher pair higher pair higher pair okay h is one okay instead of a wheel if there is a piston if there is a slider so i can say the type of contact is a surface contact as in case of a this one you can see if there is a piston the type of contact will be surface then in this in that case the, uh, there is no edge this is zero okay but since in this case uh, the type of the fourth link is a, a wheel so i can say the type of contact between the frame and the wheel is a point contact so it means s is one you just substitute the value that is l is equal to four j is equal to three and h is one we get the answer as 2 degrees of freedom. Yes, sir. Okay. It means at least two coordinates are required to specify the exact position of this mechanism. One is this theta one. And you need to mention the angle of this wheel. Just take any one as the reference. What is the angular position of this wheel? Okay. Two coordinates are required to specify the exact condition of this mechanism. Just take this as a reference x, okay? What is the angle made by this circular disc? Whether it is at a 0 degree, 90, 360, okay? And one more this, the angle made by this crank with respect to the frame, okay? This angle and this angle. So that is nothing but degree, this uh, degrees of freedom. So I'll take the last problem uh, so that I can clarify what is the exactly surface and uh, point contact. Just take uh, this one, eighth problem, which is nothing but uh, your IC engine, okay? This will be a crankshaft, this is a crank, this is a connecting rod, and this is a piston, okay? And this will be your cylinder, okay? The cylinder will be fixed, correct? There is not, there, there is no movement of the cylinder. So this and this and this, all fixed links are considered as only one link, okay? All fixed links are considered as only one link. Now, I can say, I can so start... equal to one. N yeah. equal to 1. Okay, correct. N equal to 1. Correct, correct. The degrees of freedom is 1. It means uh, if you are going to mention uh, this angle, crank angle, theta 1, okay, that is sufficient to locate the exact position of this piston, crank, connecting rod. N is 1. Okay. So if you want, if you want the explanation, uh, okay. so this crank is one kinematic link. Okay, but
but in actual case the crank will not be in a straight line so as explained in the ppt so in the first slide the kinetic link okay actually the the this is a where is where it is uh, this is a crank you can see at the bottom portion so this is a crank but i have shown with a line diagram so this is a connecting rod and this is your uh, cylinder and this is a piston they are not in a uh, uh, you can say they are not a straight line they are not a single line okay but for our convenience while drawing we'll show with a line line diagram okay so don't confuse with why it is a this is also line this is also line and the type of contact is a point not actually the crank will be like this and the connecting rod will be like this and the type of contact will be a surface contact okay so and uh, you can see there are four kinematic links that is a crank first one connecting rod second the piston is a third one and this the fixed link is nothing but a cylinder the cylinder will be fixed so i can consider that as four okay and this also four fixed link is considered as only one link for example if you are uh, in your home there are four ceiling fans okay the ceiling the roof is only one but the fans are attached to the same ceiling okay where maybe you are having one fan in your bedroom and one fan in a hall okay it means the roof is only one okay the fixed uh, link is only one okay at different uh, at different places the links are attached okay and the joint j is equal to 4 how between the first and fourth link there is one joint between first and second there is one more between second and third between connecting rod and this piston there is one joint okay three okay and between three and four the type of contact will be a surface contact because the piston is going to slide okay the surface of the piston and the surface of the cylinder they are in contact and the type of contact is a surface contact okay so as i said j is nothing but number of binary joints plus number of lower pairs remember okay in the j itself binary joints also comes and lower pairs also comes so you have three binary joints between 1 and 4 between 1 and 2 between 2 and 3 okay 3 plus and the type of contact between the 3 and 4 is a surface that is a lower pair surface contact means lower pair it comes here itself 3 plus 1 is 4 so total j is 4 and there is no point contact between any link there is no line contact at all h is 0 the higher pair is 0 So after that, we'll get n as one. Okay. So this is uh, what about the uh, degrees of freedom of different mechanisms. If it is clear in the next class, I'll solve some more numericals so that I can uh, clarify if any doubts. Okay. In the degrees of freedom. So if it is clear, I'll wind up today's class. Okay. Thank you.